I'd like to give you a quick tutorial on a couple things. Um, the first is something I left out of the last video um, was the manual. Um, so we know what ls does, you know, it lists all the files and directories within a directory. Um, but if I want to get more options and information about um, an operation, I can type man for the manual and it will show all this. So it turns out this is the one I'm looking for right here. Dash one, it forces output to be one entry per line. Cool, and you get out of a man page by hitting Q. So I can type ls dash one and you'll see instead of spreading them across like this, it made them a single column. So that is uh, man. The next thing I wanted to talk about was compilation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need some source code. So it turns out I already had some, so I'm just going to quickly erase all of these files with the remove command. You'll see that they're gone. I'm going to head into VI and I'm going to write a program called program.c. And I go into insert mode by hitting I and this is the entry point for the application so I must provide a main function. And this is really only going to do one thing, printf, and it's going to say hello world and there's a special escape character for a new line. And I feel good about that. So I'm going to save and quit. Now, if I try to compile this, I'm going to use just the compilation part of GNU C compiler. You'll see that I have a warning here. And warnings are your friend. The compiler is your friend. You should never, ever, except in very rare cases, ignore warnings. So here it says I'm implicitly declaring a library function called printf, which is true. I didn't include any libraries and I'm trying to invoke this function. So it says here's how you fix it. You either need to include this header, this system header, or you need to tell me what printf means. So let's go back in and let's fix this. So let's go into insert mode and I'm going to pound include stdio. And remember angle brackets are used for system headers and if you have your own headers they would be in quotation marks. So let's save and quit there. Now if I press up I can cycle through old commands. So I'm going to try recompiling and looks like we're good to go. So let's just clear the screen real quickly and let's take a look at what we have. So we have the original source code program.c which is interesting. Uh, we also have this program.o. Now that's also interesting. What that is is object code and I can take a peek at that. It says this is a binary file. Oh boy. And that's what it looks like. So there you go. Not really human readable. You can look at that again. Um, it's just a mess to us. It's interesting you can see our string in here, this hello world. Um, anyway, let's get out of that, hit Q. And by the way, that's the less command for showing things. So now that I have those, um, I can take that object code and I can link it into an application. So I'm going to use the compiler and I'm going to link program.o and I'm going to put the output into an executable called program. And I'm just putting this in all caps so it will be easier for you to see that source code and object code will be lowercase and the executable is all caps. So we do that and it looks like it went through. So there you have it. And again, we could try looking at this. It's going to be gobbledygook. We can quit out of that. Now the way to run um, an executable is we hit dot slash. So it's like, hey, in this current directory, um, let's open this thing. 
So I hit it and it says hello world. So there we go. We compiled a program. Now this is a very simple example of compilation. And there's also a shortcut I can show you. Uh, let's just remove this program and object code here. So you can see that I just have the source code. Most of the time you're just going to want to do this. You're going to want to compile your files and then you're want, going to want to specify the output as something. And so it does both of those compile and link, link steps in one go. So there you go. Now another thing you can do is you don't have to specify the output. So you could say, I want to compile this, and that's it. And if you do that, it defaults to something called a.out. So you can also run a.out, same way. There you go. Now, sometimes we'll want to make something. It's called a make file. So we'll go into VI, and make files can be called make file or make file with a capital M. I usually do them lowercase, but I'll just show this. So go into insert mode here in VI, and we're going to give this rule uh, to make all make program. And to make program, you can see that this is kind of recursive here, uh, take the object code program.o and you can make that by doing um, GCC dash O. Now, if I, uh, sorry, on, so the output program, I'm getting all mixed up here. Here we go. So use GCC and make the output called this um, from that. Now, the next rule we're going to specify is this program dot o and program dot o comes from um, program dot c by doing gcc dash c on program, whoops, program dot c. And then there's also this clean function we'll get to, and it can remove stuff. And we're just going to remove this and this. So let's see how we did. So escape colon wq, and let's try make. And it looks like uh, it did the steps. It did gcc-c on program.c to make the object code. And then it made output from uh, the program.o and called that program. So if I do a little listing here, now let's just clean this up. Let's remove a.out. And it looks like we got what we wanted here. Now the other thing we can do is, remember how we specified that clean, if we say make clean, there you see it just says, okay, I removed program.o and program. Do a list here and all that's left is make file and program.c. So again, you just hit make and there it is and it's done. Now to prove that um, make files can be named with a capital M or a lowercase m, let's do a move. We'll move this to this. And you can see that there it is. And well, it's true, there's nothing to be done because I already compiled it. So let's just do a make clean real quick. Uh, clear the screen, do a listing and hit make. And there you see it's done it. So now let's try another experiment. Let's uh, rename make file uh, dogs. So if I hit make, it has no idea. So obviously that doesn't work. So we're just going to name that back to something that makes sense and that make can recognize. And we are good to go. So there you have it. That is make.